they don't know that he's God and they don't worship him they can only go so far and I'm telling you as far as they've gone is not nearly enough it pales in comparison to where we're supposed to go and be welcome to our day the Holy Ghost is God Father in the earth in today heaven. and you walk with Jesus him by saying right words my name is Andrew Hemstrott thanks for joining us if this is your first time here make sure to subscribe if this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you then consider becoming a partner with us Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7 when a man's ways please the Lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him is this a scripture yes. is this in your Bible yes. is that a promise of God yes. so the enemies shall be at peace but there's a qualification here unfortunately mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. the qualification is that your ways have to please the Lord and maybe maybe your ways aren't pleasing the Lord so much well Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says but without faith it's impossible to please him so if we flip that with faith it's possible to please him and then he goes on and explains some of the qualifications of that for he that comes to God must believe that he is who is God do you know who God is in the earth today his name is the Holy Ghost you have to believe that he is is what well is exists but he is in the earth say I believe, I believe God the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is, is in, the in the earth where are you in the earth, in the earth. well isn't that convenient mm -hmm. so you have a step towards pleasing God that other people who don't believe that they can't have that are you here yeah. so without faith it's impossible to please him for he that comes to God the only one that's in the earth we're coming to him must believe that he is and and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him mm -hmm. what's that called that's faith faith pleases God without that faith you can't please God right. are you here so we have a faith listen we have a faith in the Holy Ghost who is God in the earth believing that he's rewarding us as we diligently seek him mm -hmm. is this too difficult no. if we're doing this we're meeting the qualifications of what pleases him mm -hmm. say him him, him who the Holy Ghost. him God the Holy Ghost in the earth today get that straight most people don't have it straight do they so with this faith with this belief you ever heard somebody say this is my faith mm -hmm. right with this operation of faith we're qualified to please God yeah. without this operation of faith we don't qualify for pleasing God so we're outside of what pleases God which makes you a non pleaser of God which makes you displeasing are you here mm -hmm. again is this that difficult Say, I, want to please God. I want to please God well if you want to please God you got to get into the things that please him he is not pleased with your fathers he's long-suffering he's merciful he's patient thank God the long-suffering I, I think is even better than patient oh he suffered a long time he done suffered long time with your fathers mm -hmm. and even our fathers in the faith are you here mm -hmm. but not pleased 
because they were not qualified because they didn't do and believe the things I just said within the first what five minutes of this message disqualified mm -hmm. non pleasers because they were non worshipers of God the Holy Ghost you could say pre worshipers because they never got there say pre worshipers because they never got there you want to please God you worship him mm -hmm. and then begin speaking in agreement with his words but you hear some people say my pastor doesn't worship the Holy Ghost have you ever heard this yes. I also hear and you've heard this before my pastor doesn't speak in tongues how many of you heard this before they didn't go there well if he doesn't speak in other tongues and he doesn't worship the Holy Ghost as God what chance does his congregation have to go there and be established in that none, none. pastors and leaders are supposed to lead into the things of God into the truth of God into the farthest thing that they could possibly go are you here yeah. they're supposed to be leaders leaders means you go there mm -hmm. and you lead which means you go there first before the congregation does mm -hmm. you're not waiting around for you the congregation to give great approval to you to go there that's not leading leaders are supposed to lead the way yeah. that means that that person therefore that leader that pastor has to be willing to embrace something he's not embraced before so he can be changed so that other people can follow him into that change mm -hmm. and I've heard other people say when they realize some of these things they say well what about the verse that says forsake not the assembling of ourselves together Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 says let us hold fast to the profession of your faith without wavering for he's faithful that promised verse 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together you have to assemble yourself together with people of like precious faith some would use this verse of scripture as an excuse to not have to speak in other tongues to not have to worship the Holy Ghost because their pastor didn't go there mm -hmm. and I'm still I'm doing this scripture I'm not forsaking the assembling of myself together listen the assembling may change where you assemble may change how you assemble may change and I have much more to say on this but it's beyond the scope of this message I will say however that when you use the words I worship you Holy Ghost you enter into an assembly and a congregation that's different than anything else you've ever been in before a different place Jude verse 19 these be they who separate themselves sensual having not the spirit they separated themselves having not the spirit you see where the separation came from mm -hmm. verse 20 but you beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost your most holy faith in the Holy Ghost this faith that you build yourself up in is in the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. it's the greatest faith and it's the most pleasing to God who is mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. why does this seem so difficult <laughs> I've personally had to overcome more than a little what you would consider resentment toward the people that I served under that were my leaders that I followed for years and years and years don't don't misunderstand me I, I learned a lot and I developed a lot but they never went here they wouldn't go here and it bothered me because once I came into this room of worshiping the Holy Ghost and realized the vastness of this space 
and the truth of living in this room worshiping the Holy Ghost and walking with him in the earth by saying words mm -hmm. I got a little irritated they never told me this mm -hmm. but then I realized they just didn't know but they all stayed pre worshipers never went through that door but once you know say once I know, once, I know. once you know and have your eyes opened that the Holy Ghost is God he's in the earth today and you begin worshiping him you know something that obviously they didn't know then you hear these words they don't worship the Holy Ghost at my church it begins to hit you quite strongly they don't worship God at your church all of a sudden you have a problem <laughs> they don't know that he's God and they don't worship him they can only go so far and I'm telling you as far as they've gone is not nearly enough it pales in comparison to where we're supposed to go and be yeah. welcome to our day Isaiah chapter 40 verse 13 who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord or being his counselor has taught him now we in our religiously educated mind we would say of the Lord when you could read this who has directed the Spirit Lord but it even clarifies it as we go on or being his say his. his so all of a sudden we're no longer talking about a force or an anointing we're talking about a him we're talking about a person or being his counselor hath taught him spirit of the Lord him verse 14 with whom he say he. he he counseled and who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment and taught him knowledge or showed to him the way of understanding the answer obviously is no one no one had to show him his him this right mm -hmm. he's the spirit Lord mm -hmm. verse 17 all nations are before him all nations are before him as nothing and they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity verse 18 are you still here yes. mm -hmm. to whom then shall we liken God mm -hmm. are you still here maybe you didn't get it who has directed the Spirit Lord and taught him to whom will we liken God the Spirit Lord is God verse 25 to whom then will you liken me or shall I be equal saith the Holy One he is the Holy One he is the Holy Ghost he is God he's the Spirit Lord he's in the earth today he's him his him he I'd probably get kicked out of half of those churches because I worship him his him he and you don't well I didn't know yesterday what I know today say I didn't know yesterday, I didn't know yesterday. what I know, today. I know today is that okay mm. should you be okay with that well you know if you're not okay with that you're not growing and you can't change to become what you're supposed to be yeah. you know it all there's no hope for you I didn't know yesterday what I know today and because of that I've changed mm -hmm. I've changed say I've changed. I've changed I believe something now I didn't believe before what does that do it changes me yeah. I'm not the same kind of believer I was before I'm telling you and I believed all the stuff that you say you believe before but I've changed yeah. well so many preachers are unwilling to go here for whatever reason I know most of the reasons but 
usually it's they're too invested in the old the old ways the old theology they know all the old theology mm -hmm. I know all the old theology they've written too many books that don't say what they're supposed to believe now mm -hmm. and they still have to sell them because they're they still have stacks of them they're too invested in the past old messages pre-worship baggage say pre-worship pre baggage. baggage you know what I mean yeah. right yeah. And what does that end up doing I'll just hold you back you need to get rid of it and they feel like they're losing authority in front of people if they embrace such a radical thing as the things I've been saying tonight or embrace such a radical change because it, it seems like a radical change and they're afraid the people will leave because they won't like it mm -hmm. and they probably will but what are you gonna do Who, what you have to make that choice am I gonna go with what God is telling me to do or am I gonna try to pander to these people to me it's not really a choice but some people struggle with it so they think they're gonna lose authority if they change that much can you see that you know if they if they they should want their pastor to change now that seems wrong doesn't it I don't want my pastor to change because my pastor uh, he's supposed to be he's, he's like the solid rock that we all are supposed to emulate and be like he should be on a continual process of, of being changed from glory to glory and then you follow him yeah. are you here yeah. but rather than keeping your authority by not changing the opposite is true you gain authority you gain authenticity by changing from what you were to what you're supposed to be and each change brings forth a new glory and a new set of believers who will go with you to the next glory so you gain authenticity you gain authority by changing say you gain, you gain authority, authority by, changing. by changing and you gain authority to those who are going on those are the people you want those are the people that matter and you gain respect in that group pastors would say I can do my job without speaking in tongues do you know this maybe you've never met these people <laughs> I see them all I can do my job without speaking in tongues they would say I can do my job without worshiping the Holy Ghost as God or walking with him by saying words no you can't what if I told you your job exists in this room this room of worshiping the Holy Ghost as God that's where your job is mm -hmm. and until you get in that room and stay in there long enough I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost and let him change you in that room change everything mm -hmm. and you don't even know what your job is you're not pleasing God and you're not doing what he's called you to do is this fine yet you can't do your job until you've worshipped him enough to be radically altered radically changed your job is to lead people into that which you've entered into mm -hmm. you enter first you change and your speaking changes you know this right mm -hmm say my speaking changes my speaking changes and if your speaking hasn't changed we can hear it right <laughs> we all know it everyone who's in this room all of you out there all of you in here that's in this room we all hear it we hear that their speaking has not changed but when you enter into this room you change and your speaking changes so embrace this you who have entered into this room 
of worshiping the Holy Ghost as God I am the change that the earth has been waiting for say this I, I am, the am the change that the earth, that the earth has been waiting for and this is only the beginning of change of good things to come you see a pre worshiper is not the same as one who worships the Holy Ghost you've yet to cross the threshold the way you think the way you talk changes I can hear that you haven't yet it's still a pre worshiper Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 1 woe be unto the pastors say whoa, whoa. Be, unto be unto the pastors, the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture saith the Lord if you're not changing yourself and entering into that which God has called you to mm -hmm. you are destroying your sheep you think you're just you know being nice to them no they're being destroyed and those who realize listen those who realize it will scatter they have to go somewhere else you wouldn't change and they shouldn't have to go someplace else but if you don't change they can't mm -hmm. or at least there now we are talking about having our ways please the Lord right mm -hmm. and then our enemies being at peace with us yeah. peace be still mm -hmm. so your ways have to please the Spirit Lord and he is not pleased with your fathers and most of your pastors can you see that did I did I make this up Proverbs chapter 16 verse 7 when a man's ways please the Lord mm -hmm. he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him right mm -hmm. let's look at Luke Luke chapter 4 and here we see Jesus had just been preaching to some of his fathers and some of his elders and some of his pastors in his local church there did you find it Luke chapter 4 verse 28 and they all in the synagogue when they heard these things were filled with wrath they were filled with wrath verse 29 and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill whereon their city was built that they might cast him down headlong good message yeah. verse 30 but he passing through the midst of them went his way the Spirit Lord caused his enemies to be at peace mm -hmm. with him unwittingly mm -hmm. unwillingly mm -hmm. peace be still he walked through their midst and went his way mm -hmm. he was still going his way and his enemies were caused to be at peace are you here yes another example would be mark chapter 4 verse 35 and the same day when the evening was come he saith unto them let us pass over to the other side and when they had sent away the multitude they took him even as he was in the ship and there were also with him other little ships mm -hmm. and there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full verse 38 and he was in the hindered part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they awake him and say unto him master carest thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said unto them why are you so fearful how is it that you have no what faith, faith. what pleases God faith. faith what causes the enemies to be at peace faith and they feared exceedingly that scared him even more 
and they feared exceedingly and said one to another what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him holy ghost worshipers have a faith that pleases god the holy ghost the only true and living god who's in the earth today and we get to walk with him pleasing him and believing that in pleasing him he rewards us one of the rewards that the holy ghost gives you is that he causes all of your enemies to be at peace with you unwittingly or not mm -hmm. let us holy ghost worshipers pass over to the other side thank you holy ghost for blessing these people that these words they have heard and now they have entered into a place where they can pass over to the other side and the persecutions and the things that seemed like it was an enemy to them passing over shall peace be still we worship you we give you praise and glory in jesus name amen if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me holy ghost i worship you i walk with you by saying words i give and it's given unto me good measure press down shaken together and running over do men give into my bosom in jesus name amen